Okay, great. So we back to the Hui Ge. So Buddhist persecution in 574 was still in the life of Hui Ge, so that uh, paragraph. You know, there's a three per persecutions in, in Chinese Buddhism history. And um, 574, uh, I think it's the first one that uh, Buddhism was persecuted. There's a little, uh, there's a lot of history, but um, you know, every emperor have different taste of you know religion. So you know, against or with the Buddhism. Anyway, uh, Hui Ke was in this try to help to preserve a lot of uh, Buddhist sutras. Uh, during this uh, persecution in 574. Then we go on. Um, quick, in 579, Hui returned to Yedu and expounded Dharma, joined large numbers, listened to his teachings and aroused the hostility of other Buddhist teachers, one of whom, Tao Heng, pay money to have Hui Ke killed, but Hui Ke converted the would-be assassin. You see, the, uh, he like, even enlightened would be his assassin with his uh, ability. Then uh, there's a comp companion of the five uh, lamps condemns that Hui Ke lived up to age of 107. Wow, that's long longevity. He was buried about 40 kilometers east of uh, Anyang city, Hebei province. Hebei province. So He is a pan, um, Changjiang in Hebei. No, it's, so anyway, it's uh, just uh, in the middle of China. The Tang Dynasty Emperor De Zhong gave Hui Ke Honorific Da Zhu, so great ancestor, Da Zhu Hui Ke. Uh, he's posed a humorous, uh, you know, name. Then we go on cutting his of his arm. This really a very uh, unique of his his way of searching the truth. Legend has it that Bodhidharma initially refused to teach Hui Ke. Hui Ke stood in the snow outside Bodhidharma's cave, 
We know the story of the Bodhidharma's, uh, you know, facing and came sitting meditation for nine years without eating, sleeping, you know, drinking, sitting, facing the wall for nine years. It's beyond our imagination. Then Huika stood in the snow outside a Bodhidharma's cave all night until snow reached his waist. In the morning, Bodhidharma asked him why he was there and Huika replied he wanted the teacher to open the gate of exilisa of universal compassion to liberate all beings. You see that determination? to seek the ultimate truth. And now the ultimate truth is in front of you. <laughs> At that time, it's not so easy to meet, um, to meet a master. You have travel months, years, you know, to meet a master. Then Bodhidharma refused saying, how can you hope for true religion with little virtue, little wisdom, a shallow heart, and ignorant mind. Even so, you know, Bodhidharma says very little vir vir virtue, wisdom, and shallow heart. It's just a waste of effort. Finally, to prove his resolve, we could cut off his left arm and present it to the first patriarch as a token of his sincerity. Wow. It's imagine, you know, it's uh, Bodhidharma then accepted him as a student and ch changed his name from Shen Guang to Huike, which means wisdom and capacity. There's a story about Bodhidharma, the, the story between Bodhidharma and Huike, a film, sorry. The, there's a film, you can Google Bodhidharma. There's a, there's a film there. Okay, it's uh, so touching. I cried when I watched that movie, especially when Huik was standing at the, the cave in froze, you know, freezing winter, determined to looking for the teaching of the ultimate truth and cut his arm. Wow. It's so touching. It's so touching. It's you know when you are determined to looking to look for the truth, the ultimate truth, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Then next will be our talk today. Precifying the mind. It's a very short one, but you see, Huika asked the Bodhidharma. My mind is anxious. Please pacify it. Bodhidharma replied, bring, you, bring me your mind, I will pacify it. Huika said, although I have sought it, I cannot find it. <laughs> there, Bodhidharma replied, I have pacified your mind. <laughs> Can you get it? <laughs> That's how Huika enlightened. <laughs> so <laughs> simple. So I try to look at Chinese version of this story. Oh, so in Chinese we say Huike asked Bodhidharma, 我心为您起师与安. So my mind is unsettled, is anxious. Can you, you know, pacify it? So the translation is very uh, accurate. So Bodhidharma said, 将心来于汝安. So give me your an an anxious mind, I will pacify it. Then Huike thought about it, 
for a period of time and answered, Mi xin liao bu ke de. So my conscious, my anxious mind or unsettled mind uh, is, how to say, there's nowhere to find it. Or I cannot find it, the unsettled mind. Then the Bodhidharma said, I just pacified your mind. <laughs> so, from my understanding, our unsettled mind, including the, how to say, emotions, the unpleasant emotions, is all illusions, are all illusions. Is they are illusory. It seems seemingly true there, but if you really try to look at it, try to hold on it or grasp it, it's fleeting. Actually, it's our experience. You see, the Bodhidharma is the first patriarch of Chan, so he really direct directly pointing to the true seeing or the true, the right perceiving. Again, I use that analogy. The best analogy to talk about the ultimate truth is the mirror and reflections. You are a conscious mirror Everything you can experience are reflections in your four-dimensional conscious mirror. We say aware, awareness. It's simply every experience is so true, but ultimately they're not they're they're not real. They are empty. <laughs> every reflection, every experience you can experience now, my voice, your body sensation, your room, is fleeting, is transient. And empty. Empty again is emptiness means everything you can experience now has no in, independent true self in it. Namely, everything you can experience watching, you know, ima an image, a sound, a body sensation have to re rely on another condition. They have to coexist. And they cannot exist except you, the awareness. So you are the truth, and they are just reflections in the truth. But don't go to another extremity, which is the denial of life. If every reflection, every experience you, you can experiencing now as a sound, as an image, as a memory, as a relationship, are the reflections in the mirror or in the awareness, which is true, then everything is true. <laughs> that's the, that's the most uh, paradoxical thing. It's, so there's a middle way.
you don't go to oh the emptiness nothing existed it, it, nothing does exist and you don't go go to oh everything is so true i have to attach you know grasping every phenomenal world you don't go to either extremities you are in the middle way that's called a right view It reminds me Rama Ramana Maharshi seeking seek the eye to realize its illusory nature and realize the source of our true nature. Yes, so I will use that uh, analogy again, or the ocean and a drop. So we are a drop in the ocean now. But for most people, we just identify we are the drop in the ocean, this body, this mind, that's all. And uh, relatives and family, you know, education, job or career, you know. So there's a very limited understanding of who am I. But once you awaken, you notice there's a greater eye. You are, you are the entire ocean in the drop. Every element in the nature, like trees, you have connection, you, have, you are part of it. You are, we are the part of nature, the sunlight, the raindrops, the wind, you know. It's a dynamic flow, exchange, exchange of information, data, you know, and information, energy, and matter. It's a constantly flow exchange. It's just a, the drop in the Pacific Ocean is in constant exchange with the entire ocean. Make sense? And we are, at this right very moment, we are in a constant exchange in terms of energy, information, and matter. So if you realize you're the entire ocean in one job, in one drop, then there's no confliction between the drop and ocean. It's one thing, just in a different scale, in a different perspective. Actually, it's, it's one thing. The drop in the Pacific Ocean contains all the information of the Pacific Ocean, while the entire Pacific Ocean have to manifest it in drops, currents, you know, waves. It, it moves, right? It moves in drops, in currents, in waves. It's alive, and we are uh, we are living. We are alive in that cosmic flow of information, energy, and matter. So you are a drop, and or you are a entire ocean at the same time. So the, the individuality and uh, cosmology, there's no, uh, there's no uh, conflict. <laughs> A 
every experience we're having now is the manifestation of the atom ultimate. So every experience is true. It's the highest understanding. Don't deny of experience. No. Just be free from the experience. You are in the experience, but you can be free from every experience. From moment to moment. Then, voila, you got it. <laughs> it's just, oh, just like that. All the clouds of the mind removed. And you know, the clouds are illusion. <laughs> and clouds will come and the clouds will go. You still live in the this body mind. You still have your memories, relationship, your job, your career, but you have total different understanding now. Nothing can really touches you. I mean, touches should be uh, in a term of uh, you know, agitate you or depress you. Let's go on a little bit. According to the Dunkaraku, when Huygen and Bandama were climbing up the awakening, we're talking about awakening. Actually, in the Chinese version, pacifying the mind uh, makes uh, Huygen awakened already. Let's see. The few houses peak, uh, climbing up the few houses peak. Bodhidharma asks, "Where are you going?" Quick reply, "Please go, reply, please go right, please go right ahead." That's it. Bodhidharma retorted, "If you go right ahead, you cannot move a step." Upon hearing those words, Quick was enlightened. <laughs> Let me see if there's any English word or Chinese version here. So in the Zen story, you see every, especially between the masters and the, the disciples, the, 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 the teachers or the masters saying has dual meaning. They're climbing the uh, mountain and the Bodhidharma asked, where are we going? Quaker asked, go right ahead, that's it. And Bodhidharma said, if you go right ahead, you cannot move a step. So they are talking about not only the external situations or climbing mountains, they're also talking about the internal spiritual path. <laughs> In the perspective of Buddha nature, your pure being, you never move. Your physical body may move from here to there, but there is something never moving. That's the Bodhidharma's uh, reply. So if you go right ahead, you cannot move a step.
there should be a little bit more uh, pre-contact, you know, context here, but it's very short one. There's something never changing, never moving, never comes or goes. No matter which direction you go, left or right, you know. And later on, there's a transmissions. Bodhidharma wishes to return to India and call together his disciples and following exchange that took place. Bodhidharma asked each of one say something to demonstrate your understanding. So you can take, I, I won't list, uh, speak, I just give a quick uh, review. Dao Fu said, and that there's a female monk or nun, Zhong Chi said, and Dao Yu said, finally, they all, they all say something, you see. Finally, Hui He came forth, bowed deeply in silence, said nothing, stood up straight. He prostrated to the master and stood up straight. Then Bodhidharma said, you have attained my marrow. Marrow means the heart, the, the essence of Bodhidharma's teaching. Then he passed on the symbolic robe and the bow of Dharma succession to Hui Ke, then to Sun Chan, then to Hong Ren, then to Hui Neng. You still remember that somebody tried to grab uh, took away the, the symbolic robe and bow of Dharma from the sixth page of Hui Ke. He, always caught, he was almost caught up and uh, got killed. Anyway, that's the symbolic robe and um, bow. And a copy of uh, Lankavatara Sutra, Lan Chie Jin, as the there's a Chinese version, so there's some translation already. So at that time, at the first patriarch, there's a no such, so many English, uh, sorry, uh, Chinese versions of the sutras. So Nang Nankavatara Sutra is one of them. And from, I, from the, the first patriarch, Bodhidharma, to the fourth patriarch, Sun um, Chan, then the third is Sun Chan. Sorry, the first, the four, from the first to fourth patriarchs, they are using the Lankavatara Sutra to teach. But since from the the the, the fifth master, uh, the teacher, the the teacher of the Hui Hui Neng. Then they use the uh, use of the Diamond Sutra. They, they so just like tell you that different masters use different uh, sutras to teach. Uh, then sudden awakening. Quaker wrote himself that originally deluded, so we are in a sudden awakening. One caught up ban, uh, Mo Ni Bao Zhu, many pearl a parts heard. Suddenly one is awakened and it is recognized as pearl. Ignorance and wisdom are identical, not different. So, Fan Nao Ji Puti Puti Ji Fan Nao. So, it's all about our mind. No matter you, you are ignorant now, it is the manifest manifestation. Every thought you have, memory, is the manifestation of the cosmic intelligence. Once you realize you awaken, then it it, it uh, transfer or 
transformed into wisdom. Your thoughts, memory are still there. You can use them to serve, to love, to care, you know, to awaken others. So they're identical, there's no difference. Just the difference on, only is, or do you know, or do you not? <laughs> uh, two entries. So the two entries refers to entrance of principle and entrance of practice. So if we are using more modern language, it's like um, you have to you have some understanding of one thing first, like a piano, like uh, any job you're doing, you have the knowledge first, right? You read the books, you read the you know textbook, you read the principles. Then you have to apply all this knowledge into your everyday life or the real situation. Like you know how to cook a meal, you you study the you know the ingredients, uh, how many times you have to cook, but you have to cut every you know veggies or meats or peppers and put into cook and pot and fry it and you know put the salt and oil and everything so that's the entrance of practice so entrance of principle the knowledge and entrance of practice the real application into your job or everyday life these two entrance at least very uh, logic and scientific that's the Buddha, uh, Bodhidharma's um, teaching. And again, Buddha nature, that's the Zen's teaching, right? That's Chan teaching. The Buddha nature was within, never outward. The people you're listening, I'm talking, has the Buddha nature already. And we are talking about Buddha nature. <laughs> you, you are it already. You, we have to we have to just recognize it recognize it, that discover okay everything is already there like the science discovery everything is just there we discovered electro electromagnetic you know field uh, 100 years ago but 1000 years ago we did we didn't understand it we didn't uh, discover it but it is it was there it is easy here and it will be there we just have to discover it. Same thing is your Buddha nature. Can you discover it? It's always, it, it was there, it is here, and it will be there for you to discover. Simple. No matter what it is, it's a physics, or it's chemistry, or it's, a, you know, physiology, or it's a psychology. Everything is already there, perfect and complete. Waiting you our discovery. That's that's the whole thing. Diamond Sutra and Flower Garden Sutra relate to a school of sudden um, enlightenment. <laughs> yes, so we call it Mahayana, great vehicle. Um, so meditation or belief or morality becomes secondary to the sudden enlightenment to is secondary because no matter how long you meditate how long you study the sutras how long you believe in buddhism is not fundamental the fundamental thing you know oh the phenomenal world it are just reflections in your awareness. That's all. Then after this awakening, every meditation, every reading of the sutras, every uh, you know following of the you know your master's procedures becomes meaningful. Otherwise, you you don't have the ultimate goal. You don't have destination. You don't know where you go. You just try. No, that does not is not efficient at all. Now you have a goal. The awareness is aware of itself. That's the ultimate destination. And not influenced by any experience you experience, you're experiencing 
or experienced or will experience, you're beyond every experience, and the, the awareness is aware of itself. That's all. <laughs> and every practice will become meaningful when you have this sudden awakening. Okay, my dear friend. <laughs> Let's show our gratitude uh, and appreciation for all the masters transmitted their knowledge, their practice, their wisdom, their love, their care to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.